Okay, YouTube, welcome back, guys, to another video here on the channel. Thank you very, very much for joining me and for watching. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about fire starting options and, you know, what I personally carry. And, yeah, so we'll just get right into it. Um, you guys might be familiar with the two is one and one is none mentality when it comes to certain items in bushcraft. So, you know, that mentality, two is one and one is none, is just meant to kind of get it into your head that if you are only carrying one option with you, one tool to perform a task and betting your life on that one tool, if something happens and it gets dropped or lost or breaks, you could be put in a serious survival situation. So you definitely want to have redundant backups. Two is one. Same deal. If I go out into the field and I have two knives and I break a knife, I've got one knife. So that's why two is one, one is none. Okay? You got to have redundant backups. So if two is one and one is none, that tells you that a very basic minimum number is going to be three. Okay? And that is the way I look at it when it comes to my fire kit, my fire making. I have bare minimum three ways. Most commonly, I carry five ways to make fire. And the five are as follows, okay? I carry a lens with me so I can use the sun to make a fire. On a day like today, the sky is crystal clear blue. I've got good sun out of the south. It's winter, but I can still get a good line of sight. And this is a resource that never goes away, okay? The sun, unless it's cloudy and overcast, I'm gonna be able to use the sun to make a fire every day it's not something that is going to run out of fuel you know like a cigarette lighter like a box of matches it's not an expendable resource okay so as long as i have a good line of sight with the sun an adequate sunlight i can get a fire okay that's number one number two is ferrocium rods i carry ferrocium rods this is a very small one Normally, I carry a 6-inch bayite, 3 8 uh, inch diameter, so it's a big, beefy, heavy rod, and I like it, but this is the one I brought out for today because I dug this out of another pack that I was going through because I've been kind of going through kit, and ferrocium rods are a pretty good way to guarantee yourself a spark because it doesn't matter if it gets wet, doesn't matter if conditions are wet, doesn't matter if you drop it in the snow, doesn't matter if you drop it in the creek, it's still going to work. It's a ferrocium rod. Blast match. I carry a blast match. I don't really care for a blast match, but if I had to, I could pull the ferrocium rod out of here because it's quarter inch diameter, so it's a fairly good sized chunk of ferro rod, and I can just strike it with the back of my knife or my flint striker from my flint and steel kit will shred a ferro rod fairly well. But anyway, that's two methods, okay? And my flint and steel kit, you guys already know, the ones familiar with the channel anyway, that this is my hands down go-to favorite method of making fire. I always have flint and steel with me because it's real easy to get a spark. Look at that shower. You probably can't see it. But every strike, I get a decent shower of sparks. However, today, I just so happen to be out of char cloth. I need to manufacture some more char cloth. But in the bottom of my tin here, as you can see, I've got a little bit of dust from my char cloth. Just a little bit. But that's still a resource that I could utilize because also with me today brand new to my kit, I've never owned one before, is a fire piston, okay? Never have I used a fire piston before. However, even that tiny amount of char cloth that's in there allows me to load that little bit of dust into the end of this fire piston to get myself an ember that I can then tap out into a bird's nest and blow into flame fire piston another really good option as i said it's not something i generally carry it's brand new to me 
it has never been used thus far. So the magnifying lens, a ferrocium rod, and flint and steel gives me three options already. I always carry matches. Normally, they're in some kind of a waterproof container or something of that nature, at least, at the very least, in a Ziploc bag to keep moisture out of them. Not today, because we are basically in a cold weather drought situation. Up to now, humidity is extremely low, and even those ma even though the matches that I have are not in anything waterproof, they don't need to be because it is very, very dry. So, carrying matches. But the be-all, end-all, guys, I know a lot of people think ferrocium rod. That is your go-to. That is the go-to for fire. And that's not necessarily true. A ferrocium rod is going to get you sparks. You're guaranteed. You can take a rock. You can take the back of your knife. You can take a lot of things, even a piece of broken glass, pick it up off the ground and shred sparks like crazy off of a ferrocium rod. However, sparks are not a guaranteed flame. On that note, you guys have seen this in past videos. This is the plasma lighter that I carry. It's also a flashlight. However, this thing has very few charges, so it's also not optimal. The only thing good about this is it doesn't blow out in the wind, so I can pick up anything that I need to even in windy conditions and I can use the plasma lighter to set that sucker ablaze however you don't get a whole lot of charges out of this thing even with the hundred percent charge on this I'll be lucky to make uh, 10 fires maybe 15 if I'm quick again nice to have but unless you carry power packs and a spare cord with you, which I commonly do, not exactly rechargeable in the field so much. I do carry battery packs, however, and I can recharge this in the field multiple times. But hands down, the number one best thing that you can do is carry cigarette lighters and redundant cigarette lighters. I have a purple one here. I've got an orange one. I've got a yellow one. And I've got a blaze orange pick, okay? Now, these kind of cigarette lighters, while they're cheap and everything else, and they do work, you want to kind of... It's fine to carry one of these, but go for a good quality cigarette lighter. You know, if you pick up one at the spur of the moment at a grocery store standing at the checkout aisle or whatever, and they're 79 cents, whatever... Yeah, you can pick one of these up, and they're going to get you flame and everything. But a cheap lighter is just as likely, when you go to strike that sucker, okay, it's just as likely to come apart on you. So invest in a high-quality lighter. Invest in a Bic, and especially bright colors. That's why this one is blaze orange, because if I drop this, I'm liable to notice that I dropped it when I realize I don't have it. I can look around and it's blaze orange, so it's going to show up, and I'm going to be able to find that a lot easier if it's gone. And these other lighters, they are colors that you don't generally see in nature unless you're looking at flowers. So something like this laying in leaf litter, especially the red, it's going to show up. But anyway, the long and the short of it is really this at the end of the day. It's great to have all these different fire making methods with you, but you do not want to guarantee yourself spark, okay? Now, a ferrocium rod, you're guaranteed spark, and you would think you're golden with that. You're not, okay? In certain conditions, even with a really good high quality ferro rod and a knife with a really sharp 90 degree spine, uh, you may be able to shred sparks all day and just have a shower of sparks look like you're spot welding, you know. But spark is not enough to guarantee fire. What you need to guarantee fire is fire, okay? Nothing less than flame. 
is going to guarantee you fire. Now, that being said, this time of the year, weather is cold. Now, cigarette lighters are butane. Butane does not gas off below freezing. And if you're a smoker, you already know this. If your cigarette lighter gets cold and you go to press down on this button to release the gas, what happens? Nothing. The reason is because the boiling point of butane is 31 point, I honestly can't tell you, but just below, like less than one degree, 31.6, 31.8, something like that, degrees Fahrenheit, butane will gas off above that temperature. However, the colder it gets, butane will stop gassing off because the gas is no longer at its boiling point, okay? So that's why if you pick up a cigarette lighter off of a table in 20 degree weather and try to use it, well, you're going to get spark, but you're not going to get gas because butane will not gas off. This is why you carry cigarette lighters and several of them. In my pack, I have got a cigarette lighter in my fire kit. I have a cigarette lighter in an outside pocket that I can get to quickly. I also carry a cigarette lighter in my cook kit. And I also carry a cigarette lighter, at least one, on my person. Now... In a cold situation, if I need to make fire, I'm not going to go get the one out of my pack because it's not going to be warm. I'm going to get the one out of my pocket because my body heat has helped to keep that butane warm enough where when I need to light, okay, it's going to gas off. If for some reason it's too cold and it won't gas off, quickest, easiest, best thing to do, take your cigarette lighter, place it inside your shirt, you just put it up under your arm and hold it there for a little bit and in just a minute or so your armpit okay your body heat is going to warm that cigarette lighter enough that butane is going to then be above its boiling point and it's going to gas off all right so as i said at the end of the day it's not about spark it's about flame okay I don't care if you like flint and steel fire. I don't care if you think matches are the way to go. I don't care if you have matches. I don't care if you have flint and steel, if you have a parabolic lens, if you have a good hand drill set, a good bow drill set. You know, all of these fire starting methods, high humidity, your matches, if they're not protected from humidity, they're not really a viable option. The only thing that's going to guarantee you a good quality open flame even in cold conditions if you keep the lighter and the fuel warm is going to be a cigarette lighter guys okay now if you just want to feel like your mountain man and some kind of a badass or something like that and you want to go out and rub two sticks together and try to get you a fire hey more power to you go for it if you think you want to carry a ferro rod and use it as your main fire starter go for it if you think flint and steel is going to be the way to go for you and that's what you want to use as your main fire starting device you know absolutely by all means go for it but never and i mean absolutely never rely on any method of fire making that i have here today except for a good quality cigarette lighter bomb proof 100 percent do not go out without a lighter because all of these items have the possibility of failure long before a cigarette lighter does, especially if you're carrying multiples. Remember what we talked about at the beginning of this video, you know, two is one and one is none. So I will commonly have three, four, even five cigarette lighters in different places, two on my body and three in my kit in various places in my kit because you just can't beat a cigarette lighter for 100% guaranteed flame like i said spark not enough
blasting match will give you a spark ferrocium rod it's going to give you a spark flint and steel that's going to give you a spark but it's not enough it's either 100 percent open flame to get a flame or nothing all right guys thank you very very much for watching by the way it is christmas day merry christmas and happy new year's to everybody i hope you're all safe and warm at home and enjoying your holiday season don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you'd like to subscribe, reach over there and hit that subscription button for me. When you do, if you do, you can reach over there and ding the notification bell and you can be notified when I upload future videos. Questions, comments, drop them down below. Hit me up and I will see you guys on the next video. And y'all, you have a really great holiday season. See you on the next one.